Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a video tutorial to share with you today. We are making this mini Kaaba as part of our Silk Road unit. Before this, I'm using this medieval castle kit. Now I don't think this kit is available, but I have provided some alternatives down in the description box below. I encourage you to check them out as well as the blog post that accompanies this video. So this is a kit that comes with all the materials you need in order to build several pieces to a castle. Now I have since purchased multiple kits and so we have have a number of these little silicon trays available for us to use in order to make our small bricks. So I'm going to pull this out. I've purchased some additional plaster just in white. I'm not going to color this up. So it's just going to be clear or rather white plaster. This is plaster of Paris and I'm going to measure out small portions to work with because we only have one small tray that we're filling up. And so I'm going to follow the directions on the box to have the correct proportion portions of water and plaster of Paris. So you want to mix this and use this right away because it does harden pretty quickly. You also want to make sure that you're in a well ventilated area. A lot of dust does kick up from this plaster of Paris. So you can either wear a mask or be in a well ventilated ventilated area, but not in a windy area. We don't want to blow this up all over the place. So I'm just using a popsicle stick in order to mix this well. You want to make sure there are no clumps. There will be little air bubbles. I'm going to show you how to reduce the air bubbles in your bricks. We're going to fill these in really carefully and there's another tool that comes with this kit in order to make them all even and just kind of spread them out but I'm just going to use that popsicle stick once again make sure that all of the bricks are well filled in you don't want any partial bricks otherwise you can't construct your project very well and then you just want to tap it a little bit so that those air bubbles come up takes about an hour or less to completely harden and then they pop right out this is super satisfying and any excess pieces around the brick you just want to gently pull off because you don't want that when you're finally assembling your project so you're going to need quite a few bricks in order to build a kaba or any other uh, structure and I'm just going to arrange them in a little tray for my son. So this is a project for my 13 year old son for our history units and he's going to go ahead and mix up more plaster and continue making these bricks and you can see all three of those little silicon trays there and that's just because we have purchased multiple kits but one will be just fine. J this just helps us get through the project a little bit faster because this part will take several days even a couple of weeks in order to make enough bricks for a project it's just a little bit slow going as it does take a, a minimum of a half hour for it to completely harden so that you can pop them out but you also want to give it a good week for them to dry completely because even though you can pop them out they're still not completely dry so here are some of the pro uh, supplies I'm going to use for this project. I have a gesso board. You could use any kind of board, but I found these at Dick Blick online and I thought they might be a good support for the projects that we're doing. We have a couple of projects, DIY projects for this unit, and those ones came in handy. I also have some glue and a ruler and a couple other supplies that we'll need for this project. Because I'm not using any other instructions or a kit for this, I had to design how this structure was going to be. And so I looked up some measurements of the actual Kaaba and then I and I measured our little bricks and then we did some bit of math and proportions in order to figure out how many bricks across and how many bricks high it needed to be so that the proportions were correct. So now we're going to put this onto our board. It's not actually going to get glued down onto the board, but I did outline where the brick should be. And this ensures that at least our first layer is nice and straight and accurate because if you mess up on the first layer, then the whole structure is not going to be straight. I then realized that the little diagram that I made was incorrect and the door is actually off to one side and it's not all the way on the ground there's a, there are a couple of steps leading up to the door so I went ahead and I altered our design a little bit but it's not exactly right I'm trying to make this more historical and I actually don't know what the color of the bricks were at the time I just assumed they were limestone and probably on a more neutral uh, color white or light gray Gray, but it's possible that they could have been uh, different colors or even clay bricks. 
Uh, so we did take some artistic liberties in making this. I also did not include the black stone, although I think that that would be a really nice addition. I just didn't know how to position it on without it falling off easily. Uh, we don't have any young children, so I didn't think it was a problem to have some things that were a little bit more delicate for the project. But if you do have little children, then I do caution you to be really careful with this project because it does have a lot of chokeables. So we're going to add some bricks where the door needs to be, but we're not going to include a door right now. We're going to make a door out of popsicle sticks later. I'm also using a really strong glue in order to glue this whole project together as we did run out of supplies that came in that original kit. And we're just going to glue every layer, but we're going to alternate the bricks so that it looks like we're laying bricks the way a mason does. For all the details to the materials that we're using, please check out the blog post that accompanies this video. Those, there are links to all of these different materials uh, in case you want to recreate this project. So now it's time to put on our roof and we are just using these popsicle sticks and thankfully they just fit. Now it's not the best choice. I didn't like using popsicle sticks in the end. Uh, I don't like the rounded tops at the top and the bottom and I wasn't able to cut them because otherwise they would be too short. But I think using something that looks a little bit more like a roof might have looked a little bit better in the end. I love that we did this project. I'm just not super pleased with the way it turned out. It's really hard to tell that it's a Kaaba. The roof on the top doesn't look so great. And the cloth that we end up using on top doesn't really look that nice. Uh, and also, I don't know historically what the cloth covering looked like. Uh, it's, it was, of course, different than what you see today, the black covering with the gold embroidery. So we're using a little handsaw in order to cut down some of our uh, popsicle sticks in order to make a door. And we're using an emery board just to sand it down. You could use sandpaper, of course. And we're going to glue together these pieces in order to make a little door. It's actually a working door. I did have a little mini hinge that we included uh, so that the door can open and close, but it's so delicate because it was really hard to glue all these things to the brick. But in the end, it does look kind of nice to have that little element. I'm using some walnut stain in order to stain the bricks, or rather the roof. You do need to be careful because the stain will also stain the bricks. You can also paint the bricks after it's completely uh, glued and dried. I would caution against using an acrylic paint because I don't think that will look as nice as a stain, but you can use whatever you have on hand and I'm sure it will look delightful in the end. I have a little brad here that we cut off the end of the brad in order to make a little doorknob. Just pulling some of my scrapbook supplies in order to add some details to this project. And then we're going to put the door on the inside. You do need to wait until all of these things dry completely. Sometimes we were a little bit hasty and wanted to add these things before everything was dried and it just kept falling apart, especially the door on the inside. We also added a couple of bricks in order to make the steps that lead up to the door. And then we glued the door inside and then that's it. Um, it's in our homeschool room on one of the shelves that happens to have a light. So we put, a, we put it right over the light. It's an LED light, so it's really safe. I also cut this t-shirt material in order to make the cloth on top, but I really don't like the way that looks in the end. It doesn't really look like a kaba. It just looks kind of like a house and... I think if we did add the cloth, having a little bit of embroidery on top of it and having it fit a little bit better might be a better option. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed this project and I hope that you find materials in order to recreate this if you wish. If you'd like to see more of our Silk Road projects, you can tap on the screen right now. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more information. And if you want to see what our homeschool looks like on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.